Today I want to bring you an honest review of the Air Venturi Avenger Woodstock version. I'm Dustin and you're watching Air Guns Are Amazing. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while now. I've featured this Air Venturi Avenger Woodstock version in a few videos so far, other types of videos that were not necessarily about the gun. I also did a short about filling it with a compressor. Uh, we've had it out doing a lot of shooting off camera, squirrel hunting. Uh, I've shot it, the kids have enjoyed it, my in-laws who didn't have rifles who needed to borrow one to go shooting have used this, and everybody's enjoying it. And if you look around on YouTube, uh, people talk it up like it is the bee's knees of PCP air rifles, at least in the budget, and certainly not in the, you know, like the thousand dollar rifles or more, but for the lower end PCPs, people talk it up like crazy. So I want to give you my impressions of it, uh, give give you some shooting on camera, but also just manage some expectations. That's one of my other goals with this video, because while I do love the rifle, um, I think right out of the box it could use a little bit of help, at least mine did. And I was hesitant to even buy an Avenger for a while because I had only seen the ones with the plastic stocks. Now, to be honest, still, I would not purchase the plastic stock version. I have plenty of rifles with synthetic stocks, but the Avenger in the plastic stock, that is some Toys R Us level plastic. Flimsy, sounds hollow, you tap it, you hear an echo through it. I still would not purchase that. And at the time of this recording, you can have that plastic one for about $350. The Woodstock, typically, depending on where you look, it's usually around $430, and I would tell you right up front in this video, that's worth the extra money. Well, anyway, let me give you a little tour of it. Way up on the front there, you can see I've added a moderator to it. That is the Donnie FL Tonto, and to put that on the Avenger, you do also need an adapter. You'll notice it looks like my shroud is a little longer than normal. That's because there's an adapter there adding about an inch. It has a built-in fill probe that you're going to see in a moment. It's got the air reservoir here, plus another tube down inside the stock. So this holds a lot of air and fills up to 300 bar, which I always forget. I think that's 4,351 PSI. So you can get it up to 300 bar. I'm coming back here. You've got the regulator gauge on this side. You've got the regular fill gauge straight across from it on the other side. It's got a single shot tray in it right now, but it also takes eight round magazines. This one, by the way, is in 25 caliber. It is a side lever action, and that is a, sort of a polymer material, but it's tough. I'm not worried about that lever at all. Has a manual safety in the position where I like it. I like that a lot better than the guns like my Benjamin Marauder or my Gamma Urban that have a little extra safety down here. It looks like another trigger. I greatly prefer these safeties right up there. Obviously, it's the wood stock. The wood, it's not the best stock. Some of the curves on it and things look like they were almost whittled by hand, but it's not bad, especially for the fact that it's not that much more expensive than the plastic version. It's got a nice rubber butt pad on it, so you get a good grip. There's no recoil to worry about, obviously, but it is a nice grip. Up on top, I've got the Uima hunting rifle, uh, hunting rifle scope, and I have a video coming out on that. I've done one on my other channel, Guns of the West, but I'm going to be releasing one soon here on Air Guns Are Amazing. The interesting thing was I got one of these sent to me for free in exchange for review on my other channel. I actually liked it so much that I purchased this one. They're a little hard to find now, but it's on Amazon. That's a Uima, at that's how I pronounce it. Down here, I've got the Glory Fire bipod, and I'll be doing a review on that as well coming up. Well, now that you've seen the rifle, why don't we get it aired up so we can start having some fun? So to fill up the Avenger, you just twist off this cap right here, which covers up the Foster fill port. I've got a little cap on my tank here, and filling it up with a tank is interesting, and I've mentioned this in a video before. This is a 300 bar tank, and this is a 300 bar fill gun, which means the tank can really never quite fill it all the way up, in all honesty, because obviously the two will balance in pressure between each other before it actually hits 300 bar, but it can get very, very close, and this tank is almost full, so it should get pretty close to that 300 bar. I'll make sure my valve is shut here. Now I'm just going to open up the valve, just very slow. You 
hear that air rushing in. Gun's now at 3,000 PSI. Open the valve a little more. There's 4,000 PSI. I'll just open the valve wide up now. And we're right about 4,100, and that's about as full as we're going to get because now the pressure is balanced between the gun and the tank. So I'll close off the tank, bleed the air out of the hose, don't forget that. Now I can just take that off, reinstall the cap. And that's it. Now let's take a look at how to fill up the magazine. And if you watched my video on my Benjamin Marauder Field and Target, this will look very familiar because the process is exactly the same. Notice how I wound that cover around. Now I'm going to place a pellet into that first hole, keeping my finger on the bottom just to make sure it doesn't come out, but now the spring tension is going to hold it. Then I just rotate this to the next one. And from there, I just keep dropping pellets in until I've got all eight holes filled. After dropping in the last pellet, I just click that cover back down into place, and that's all there is to it. And just so you're aware, the pellets I'm using are these JSB Diabolo Exact King 25 in 25.39 grain. All right, so now we've got the gun full of air. We've got magazines full of pellets. I actually loaded up three magazines, just one on camera. Downrange at 50 yards, I've got a little three inch square steel target spray painted orange with another little steel target a little larger hanging behind it to help see that orange. And at 50 yards, we'll see how the Avenger does. Now for this first magazine of shots, I'm going to let you watch from this position so you can see the operation of the gun. But then I want to shoot a magazine with you looking down the scope so you can see what I see and so you can check out this Uema scope. It's pretty nice. Well anyway, to get that uh, single shot tray out, I'm going to put the gun on safe. I'm going to go ahead and cock the lever all the way back and then that tray just lifts right out just like that. One feature I want to show about the gun uh, before I put the magazines in, I'm going to take the safety off. And the gun can be decocked, which is a must for me. I like to be able to make the gun completely safe. To decock it, you just hold the lever back as you squeeze the trigger and then gently let the lever forward. And now the gun is decocked and safe. So let's go ahead and put in a magazine. And I'll just take some shots at that three inch steel. Again, that is 50, well, it's 50.1 yards if you really want to be precise. Let's see if I can get it located here in my scope. Yes. So take the safety off and see if we can't put some pellets on that. Sure did. I hope you can hear that steel ringing. The Avenger has no problem at 50 yards. You know, depending on how this goes, we might even bump it back farther. We'll see how it goes. Well, I kind of pulled that one low, but I still hit the three inch square. All right, well, that was all eight pellets on the three inch square at 50 yards. Now three inches, that's not ultra impressive or anything, but I'm not even really taking that much time to aim. I'm just putting them down there. So for small game hunting or something out to 50 yards, maybe even farther, this gun is awesome. Now, before we continue, I did say I wanted to manage expectations. I already told you about the plastic stock and why I wouldn't buy one of those. And even on the wood stock, just a couple of things to be aware of. Before I got the moderator, I noticed I was having a little bit of, not bad, but a little point of impact shift. After watching some other videos and reading some forum posts and Facebook posts, I learned that the moderator adapter from Donnie FL that's up there lengthening that shroud a little bit actually also stabilizes the barrel. 
seems to help. And so I would say if you get the Avenger, that's a pretty necessary add-on is that little adapter just to have a little better stability between your barrel and the shroud in there. The other thing I want to mention, this Picatinny rail that you see, that is not what came with the gun. I mentioned in another video when I talked about, uh, it was not a shooting video, I just talked about some improvements Air Venturi has made and the upgrades that I made to this one. The rail that came on this, a lot of people rave about it because it does Picatinny, but it also will take scope rings for the 11 millimeter dovetail. I didn't like it at all. The little slots in the Picatinny rail were not all the same size. My rings would go in easily in some and have to be forced and squeezed into others. And when I got my scope mounted, I realized that the scope was shifted diagonally a little bit. It was not lined up straight and true to the barrel of the rifle. So I pulled it right off. I went on, uh, I think it was Airgun Depot. Yeah, it was Airgun Depot where I bought this Picatinny rail, which is made by Sabre Tactical. And just looking at it, it is so much better machined. The rings go right on nice, like they should on a nice rifle, and they do on nice rifles. And it's all lined up true with the barrel. So I would say you really want to get that moderator adapter, even if you're not adding a moderator. And then also swap out the rail for the Sabre Tactical Picatinny rail. It won't do dovetail, but you'll get such a better rail out of it. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and get another magazine in here. I'm safe. And I'm going to let you look through the scope this time. Now I've got the target set up way out at 117 yards on the other side of a dirt pile and I'm holding 22 minutes of angle high for distance. I think that was a miss. That one was a hit on the steel, but I'm not sure if I was right in the orange or just off onto the steel backer plate. Listen for the hits on the steel as I continue. That was definitely a good solid hit in the orange to end on. And here's a look at what I'm getting with this rifle with its current tune. And for the tune, I've got the regulator set at about 2,400 PSI. This was a shot string of 31 shots. It had an average velocity of 876 feet per second, a spread of just 16, and a standard deviation of only 4.5. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this look today at the Air Venturi Avenger in the Woodstock version. Like I said, you have to manage expectations, and in my opinion, it needs a little bit of work out of the box to get the most out of it, like that Sabre Tactical Rail, Donnie FL Adapter, and I even like the Donnie FL Moderator. But don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos, and if you look in the description, you'll see where to find me on social media. Thank you so much as always for watching.